So we have an opportunity. So all of us, every one of us, if you look at who followed Jesus, the 70, the 12, they, you know, when, when he did the, the completed work, the finished work at Colossians 2.15, when Satan was thoroughly defeated and publicly made a spectacle of, um, every, every one of the disciples was a part of that. Interesting. This is just a little rabbit trail. Interesting that after he rose from the dead in the book of John, there were only 10 apostles that he appeared to. Judas was dead. Thomas was missing in action. 10. The same number Abraham said for Sodom and Gomorrah. But what if there's 10? And later on, there were the, you know, Thomas came in and then they appointed somebody to take Judas's place. So on the day of Pentecost, there were 12. But it was interesting that when he appeared after he rose from the dead, it was to 10. But we have the opportunity to be, as Mike said, you are in Christ. As Joy said, you know, he's interested in our desires, radically revolutionary. He, he, there's a freedom that comes from knowing Jesus. There is a freedom. There's a celebration when Satan's got one plan for your life like he had with Leah and God intervenes and says, no, you know what? My daughter's going to live. Like he said that with all of us, you know, and different things we've been through, different things he's rescued us from. Satan's had one plan. But our Father, through Jesus Christ, who totally defeated the enemy by the power of the Holy Spirit, has a different plan. And so for us to stand back and be a part of the 70, or for us to stand back and be a part of the 12, or even to be a part of the three, when we know what Jesus has done for us, we need to step up and say, I want to be the one. I want to be the one. I want to be the one. I want this house to be the one. I want to be that close to Jesus that I can just snuggle and, and, and lean upon him and be able to ask him questions that nobody else wants to ask. Because even Peter, who was one of the three, said will you ask him so when that in that favored position you can ask questions that no one else can you are privy to to secrets from the kingdom that no one else will be privy to <coughs> when you're that one and it's progressive like it didn't happen for John overnight. Remember, he and James had a big blue because they wanted to be seated with Christ and, you know, and the mother came and the whole thing, the whole Jewish mother bit. But, you know, so we've got this whole thing happening, relationships, and Jesus loves relationships. That's what he came to sort out, relationships, because that was what God had in the Garden of Eden was a relationship, and it got messed up. And so he came back to establish us in a relationship. But we decide how close we're going to go. Jesus said, I no longer call you slaves, you're my friends. So he's opened the door. He said, you can come as close to me as you want, but the choice is ours. The choice is ours. And it's not about works. It's not about spending three hours in prayer and 40 days of fasting. It's not about any of that. It is a heart inclination that we recognize that love is the key. And we, Mike talked about faith. Well, let's get one thing understood right now. Faith will not work without love. Faith only works by love. And that is the great commandment. Love God, love people, love yourself. And out of that love will flow the Great Commission, the going off to India, Pakistan, the going to the corner shop and leading someone to the Lord. But it has to come out of love because God is love. And so the closer we get to Jesus, the, the more the manifestation of the love of God. Because in John chapter 1, verse 18, it says that Jesus came out of the bosom of the Father. That means that he is the very heart of God, exposed and expressed for us to, to live, to know and to understand. He's the very heart of God the heart of the Father. And we have an opportunity to get as close to him as we choose. Jesus 
is not the one who says, you can, Suzette, you can come this far, far, but I don't want you any closer. He says that the door is open. You can come into that throne room anytime you want. I'm your Abba Daddy. You can speak to me anytime you want, 24-7. I am available to you. I am here to listen to you, to love you, to walk with you, to work with you, to, to sort things out with you. I am your Redeemer, your Savior, your Deliverer, but more than anything else, I'm your Father. And I want, I want, he wants the best for you. That's what love is, wanting the best for people. But you have an opportunity to get rid of the layers and the veils that are on our mind, that are veils, layers of veils of, you know, like, well, who am I? Who do I think I am? What do I think, you know? All of the things that we tag ourselves with. I shared on Wednesday night I was having a great time with God. I'm, you know, spirit to spirit, heart to heart. And he was actually saying to me, Suzette, I delight in you. And I'm going, oh, you know, my heart's just melting and I'm journaling it out. And then all of a sudden my mind comes in with, oh, seriously, you really think that's God speaking to you? And it was like, oh. So it took me to say, yes, you know, but how quick the soul comes in to say, get back to where I want you tagged. Get back to where you belong. So I'm telling you right now, your soul is not to, not to come up and to tell you anything. You are a spirit being first and foremost, and your soul is in submission to your spirit, and that's how we live. And your soul will tell you lies. Your soul will tell you that this you feel rejected, abandoned, frustrated, all of that stuff. But if it's the unrenewed part of your soul, it if it's your unrenewed mind, it is lies. It is not truth. Because the promises of God is the truth of God. Come on. Jesus is the truth. If God says you are the apple of his eye, you are the apple of his eye. And how you feel about yourself and what you think of yourself is really secondary because the Father said, but you're the apple of my eye. You're my salt and you're my light. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Come on. You are my joy. You are my child. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You've been set free from the law of sin and death. Yes. The spirit of resurrection, life and power now lives within you and brings health and wholeness to your body. You've been vindicated. You've been justified. You are sanctified. Jesus Christ is your righteousness. You are wisdom. You are his wisdom walking on the earth. You are fathered by God. Born again because he desired it to be so. You weren't born because man and woman got together. The natural, they did. But you were born because the Father wanted you born. You're not an accident. You were deliberately chosen by God. So we have an opportunity to step out of abandonment. We have an opportunity to step out of rejection. We have an opportunity to step out of the lies that we tell ourselves, the tags that we put on ourselves. We have an opportunity to step out of these things and step into the finished, completed work of Jesus Christ, where Satan is under your feet for eternity. Every step you take, you, you step on his head. He is finished. He's done. He's finished, vanquished, the eternal loser, the eternal loser. But you, 
You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You walk in the Abrahamic blessing. You have the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. You've also been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You've been given everything you need for life and for godliness. You've been given divine health, divine victory. You've been given the faith. Jesus Christ himself is your faith. Like honestly, you lack nothing. You live in divine health. 